Hi and welcome to another episode of Fishing Western Australia. This week we're in the King George Falls, the backdrop is stunning and hopefully the fish will be going off. Let's see what's in this week's show. On today's show, we've got a special from the North Kimberley with some awesome scenery and of course some spectacular fishing. Nearly ultraviolet in the water there, isn't he? During the filming of the series this year, we spent two weeks with the crew from Great Escape Charters, and along with the amazing fishing, we were also lucky enough to witness the Kimberley at its best, right at the end of the wet season when the waterfalls are at their most spectacular. Isn't that amazing? At the moment, we're in the Kimberley region, in the Prince Regent River and it's quite an amazing river. It's on a fault line and for 100 kilometres it's straight as an arrow. It's also home to the fabulous King's Cascades which are quite famous and named after Philip Parker King. Now also the Cascade is famous for something else Steve. Yes, yeah, famous for something else quite tragic. A US tourist called Ginger Meadows was actually eaten by a crocodile at the base of those cliffs when they were trying to find a way up the rocks and wow. uh, it's a very dangerous place to get out of the boat but it's also a very beautiful place. I'll take some more pictures then for the album this one. It's terrific. King's Cascades are just one magnificent waterfall in the Kimberley. Another place that had us in awe was the King George River that runs through amazing cliffs to the mighty King George Falls. The power here leaves you gasping and you can't help daring your mates to do a bommy off the top. I would have, of course, if it wasn't for my bad back and all. But what was Marshy's excuse? Aside from the great scenery, the Kimberley Rivers include some quirky spots like Crocodile Creek further south. Thankfully, that's only a name and not a description. Right next to this splendid waterfall is the remains of an old camp, and it was set up by the Coolin Island miners who used to work pretty hard because they used to get iron ore out the ground. So this was kind of their weekend retreat, their sort of getaway, if you like. All around me are knickknacks, bits and bobs, old phones, paddles, even shoes and cans. But more importantly, what they've got written on them is their mementos, their messages, boat names, of all their experiences shared in this part of paradise. Even further south is a popular tourist town of Broome. And one place that you just can't miss is Malcolm Douglas's Crocodile Park near Cable Beach. Being such a friendly bloke, Malcolm was only too pleased to show Ian one of his toothy mates, which he calls Happy. Righto, where are you Happy? Right, come on. Righto, we'll just get this up and slow that on. Now, this is where you... You reckon there's a croc in there, Malcolm? Ah, oh, there's a big croc in there. This is why we call him Happy, mate. He's pretty laid back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is interesting is you don't know where that croc is. People panic when they see a croc. You don't panic when you see a croc. You panic when you can't see the croc. If you can see a croc, you can work out what to do. So if a croc is a couple of hundred metres away, you're casting away on the, on the Ord River, and yeah. if the croc comes up like this and he starts looking at you, you check out where the croc is. When he goes down, that's when you're worried because he'll be going along under the water and he'll come up closer to you. Okay. Then if he goes under and comes up just a few metres away, get right away from him because he's positioning himself for an attack. Ah, right. Yep. So it's a croc that you can't see that you worry about. Okay. Yep. Get it. Come on, Happy. Come on. 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 Here he come. Have a look at that for a mean beast. And come on. Can he hear you, Malcolm, when you call him? Oh, he can hear me. Yeah. Here he. He's a. He wants that float, doesn't he? I'm going to lose my fingers here. Yep. Yep. Gee, that'd be alright a bait caster, wouldn't it? We left Happy to play with his float and went with Peter Tucker to feed dozens of Happy's hungry offspring. What will happen is that they will eventually kill each other. They'll eventually fight and kill each other. Um, so we don't want that to happen. Because we keep them reasonably well fed, they obviously don't um, pull each other down, but they would if we were to stop feeding them. So 
but I believe Malcolm eventually wants to separate them so what will happen is we'll drain this pond and then we'll uh, individually trap these guys and move them around into different pens. But it's a good example of the pecking order. You can see here they're all the same age, but look at the difference in sizes. Some of them have runt, some of them have uh, done quite well. Just emphasizing that crocodiles will and can jump. They love eating fruit bats. Fruit bats is one of their favorite foods. They get under the mangrove trees when the fruit bats come down to nest or to roost. Crocs jump up now. As you can see, I want to try and get him out in the water a bit here. Come on, this is aggro by the way. Come on aggro, get off the wall. Up. It's not quite deep enough this pond, so he can only get about half his body length out. Come on up the gun. Can you hear those powerful jaws? They have extremely powerful jaws. Crocodiles, they have extremely well developed uh, jaw muscles along their top jaw for slamming down, but they don't have very well developed jaw muscles for opening their jaws. Coral trout. I think it must be on every fisherman's wanted poster in their bedroom because they're sought after for their eating quality and also for their fighting quality too. They attack the bait or the lure, they take it straight back in the hole and you've got to try and get them out. So as soon as you get a coral trout on, as soon as you hit, you'll feel them hit really hard, pull him straight up and just keep winding. And hopefully you get him on the surface and you'll see this beautiful fish. They've got these blue spots and they're red underneath. They're fantastic to look at. Hopefully we can get a few out to show you. Because coral trout live so close to rocks, you're going to lose a bit of gear. So he tied on some cheap jigs and worked them as close to the edges of the rocks as we could. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there's a hit and there's a fish. Oh, gee. What is it? Oh, there you go, Steve, a trout. It's not a big one, it's not your sort of trout, it's no. a coral trout. <laughs> and those spots, you can see that they're an iridescent blue colour. But quite beautiful, the blue spots. I'll pop him back to grow, and they'll grow quite a bit bigger than that. But very aggressive little fish. Oh yes, Steve. Oh, go Marshy. Could it be another trout? Oh, I hope so. We could be that lucky to get two in a row, could we? Oh, here it comes. Here we could. We could. It's a coralie. Oh, yes. I don't think that one's quite big enough, is he? No. Oh, oh that's that's close. close. Selfie hooking fish. Wow. Now that just goes to show how dangerous it can be. I just happened to turn my head and that white jig I was using, like that, big hook, come sailing past my face, so. Got to be on your guard. Just goes to show the diversity of what these fish can take. You can use bait, a lot of people do. Steve's using a jig, I'm using a white jig, which is basically a sinker that I paint red on the end and a little bit of feather on the back. Perfect. Are you still on, Steve? I am. My lure got hooked up in a crevice and believe it or not, when I got it free, a fish jumped on. That's what you like to see. Yeah. Ooh, come back. Oh, he's gone under a rock again. What's the net? this? It's a coralie! Coralie, beautiful. Get the net, quickly! That's a beautiful coral trout. Thank you very much. Oh. Now look at that for a fish. Mate, that's the best coralie I've ever caught on a jig. That's beautiful fish. Oh, aren't they fantastic? Woo! Now, Marshy, they of course aren't the sort of trout that you're used to catching. No, and far from that, Steve. They're not a salmonoid as well. They're obviously just a reef dweller, and they call them coral trout, but look at the beautiful blue iridescent spots. And don't think for one minute, just because it's a reef fish, that it's sort of, you know, uh, sitting there, chilling out in the bottom. Yeah. They really are quite an aggressive hunter when they're in the mood. And my laser jig came out of the hole, and look at that, right on the, right on the side of his gill cover, you can see there's a little, some sort of lice or something like that, that's been in his gills, and it's probably been cleaning them for him. And it's come out to see what all the commotion's about. Fantastic coral trout. I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. I bet you are too. As the sun started to set, we thought Marshy would take that hat off. But sadly, no. It seemed to be glued to his head. Keep going, keep going. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. We're here in the Kimberley 
and the water is funneling out between two islands. And right in the middle, Spanish mackerel and various other disastrously large fish for the gear that I'm using are nailing it. After him, please, belly. Out in front of me is the Big Mac. And it's gotta be a mackerel because Trevally aren't this fast. That's the best part about catching mackerel. They're not dirty fighters. And so you can afford to have a bit of fun with them by giving them their head and letting them charge away like they love doing. Now Marshy in the background's working a laser lure. Because if there's one in here, there's gonna be stacks. All right, Bally, I think I've uh, played with him enough, mate. Shall we back down on him? Or front down on him, as the case may be. We're in the current as the tide's starting to come in, and that's why it looks so rough. Now, oh, get ready, it's a Spaniard. Hello, Net. Hello, Spaniard. Oh, he's just hanging out the side. Ow. Now, some tea. He has got some tea. So what I'm gonna do is take the lure out in the net. Now you can see how purple they are in this beautiful northern sunlight and he's just absolutely nearly ultraviolet in the water there, isn't he? There we go. Pull him out. I've got the lure. And that's about 10 kilos of seriously angry Spanish mackerel. Oh, I might see if I can swim him. How's the teeth, eh? You reckon you wouldn't like them wrapped around you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just dicing with fate a bit too much. He nearly bit the cameraman then. He'll go straight away. I don't know. This is good. There we go. He's feeling strong. Yeah. He's feeling strong. I didn't do that with the pliers. He did that with his head. They're an aggressive fish, folks but I love them. The magnificent Kimberley sunset finally took our minds off Marshy's hat and we headed back to the Kimberley Explorer to swap more tails over dinner. Another awesome day in WA. So much happened during our trip on board the Kimberley Explorer that we couldn't fit all of it into the series. So here's a few of our favourite moments that didn't make it into a segment of their own. How's this for a fishing spot? I'm not too keen on grabbing this because it's so spiky. I'm just going to flip the hooks out like that. And he's gone. Quick as you like. Come on, you. Geez, how strong these little mangrove jacks. And I pulled him right out of mangroves, funnily enough. It's a beauty. Now that looks like a bit of wood to you and me. But if you look closely, that bit of wood's got eyes and some big teeth too. That's actually a freshwater crocodile. And look how close he is to the boat. So we've all moved into the middle of the boat now. And he's just sort of sitting there. He's gone down once and then come back up again. But uh, yeah, it looks just like a bit of driftwood. And yet, it's as deadly driftwood as you'll ever find. You're off, you're off, you're off. Yeah. This is quite a sizable fish. Whoa. That's a big Mick Jagger. I like them. Well, that's about the hardest I've ever had to work for a gold spot Trevally, and he's a ripper. <laughs> that current likes that. About ready to go. A little bit more. And good on him for getting in the water, for seeing those great shots. That's what a second cameraman's all about. Because this first one wouldn't go in, I can do that. <laughs> this is a red fish. Because it's red and it's a fish. And uh, there you go. They come in pairs. They come in pairs. That's his friend. They're just like buses. Dude, I've no idea what that is. Now all that noise you can hear around me, we thought they were cockies or cockatoos, but they're actually fruit bats. And they've got this beautiful little face and they're like a little puppy, little Alsatian. 
and the fabulous thing is they're just flying around in the day so contrary to belief bats do fly around in the day Where are you going? Have I got you? No, I think we've both got a fish, but it's too dark <laughs> to see. I can't tell what's going on. Well, hey! <laughs> They're talking to each other. Bit of a rattle happening. We're bound to get them with that, because they love rattles. <laughs> Beautiful. Catching giant trevally at night. Little speed demons they are. Do, 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 do. Rabbit. <laughs> Hang on. Lure retrieving 1.1. <laughs> Which is not easy. <laughs> oh. oh, it's in the trees. <laughs> Gee, these trees fight well. <laughs> It's a real dark fish though, Steve. Yeah, it's like a queen fish that's been living in the river. And it, it is a queen fish. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's no way! In the boat. I don't believe oh, that. I've never seen anything <laughs> like that before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. Unbelievable. I've, I've never heard of that happening in my life. It even dehooked itself, left the lure in the water. Oh, it's me! Straight in the boat. <laughs> this thing's got an attitude. I think something with that sort of attitude <laughs> deserves to live. <laughs> no, nah, it hit me again. Put this thing. Back. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it back before I hit it on the head with something. <laughs> this, this, this fish is psycho. There we go. Go away. Don't ever come back. Right over here, these are your American alligators you wanted to see. Now the first yeah. thing you notice is how quiet they are. Come on, come on, come on, come Not on. as aggressive as the salt water. Oh, I know, mate, look at this. Now, yeah. when you see those B-grade movies, you know when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't yeah. sleep, you put the tally on, old black and white movie on, and the P-man's wrestling that big man-eating salty. Well, he's not wrestling the man-eating salty. He's actually wrestling a, an alligator now. We definitely don't come in with our, our soldies. But the old alligator is very quiet. See that? See that? The closest thing you can have to a pet. When they get to about four and a half, five metres long, they do kill people. So you've still got to be very careful of them. But generally speaking, they're a wonderful animal. They've got that happy, smiley face. See that? Because all the time, let go of my hat. <laughs> see that there? Come on, see. But when they bite something, they just get embarrassed. See that? And then they just let go. Yeah. Great animals for display. Here you go, mate. How are you going? How are you getting on, mate? Hey? There we are, there's a bit of scratch. Well, this has been a fantastic experience for me with Malcolm Douglas. Let's see what's coming up in next week's show. Don't miss next week's episode because it's a special one hour season finale. We've got everything, including sailfish, wahoo, pink snapper on fly, Carnarvon Creek fishing, and the biggest barramundi you've ever seen. What a fish! What a fish! What a fish! Well, it's been a great show. We certainly hope you enjoyed it because we really enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>